الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلاما على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد مبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد مبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد مبارك وسلم الحمد لله we were blessed with being able to attend the salatul juma there are some events that are going on in our community in our backyard that are very disturbing um, alhamdulillah we are still have the ability to make it to salatul juma and i pray that we're all safe and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us safe and keeps us in the best of iman um, last time i spoke I, we talked about struggle and struggling in our deen and struggling in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in allah's path another major struggle that we all face we faced it ourselves when we grew up as children we faced it when we were teenagers and young adults and now many of us here i can see from the faces and from the family members and the friends that i have that alhamdulillah we're all parents and again to to discuss the events going on that we all know about in the new town schools we all have children and when we read the stories on the on the news and when we hear the radio and we get the messages on our phone about what's happening and what's happened to these children it makes us sad it, you know even though alhamdulillah my own child she's at home she's safe and the children of our community members so far to this point we haven't heard anything of anyone being in, in harm's way but even with that said we don't know these children we don't know their parents we don't know their names but we still feel something in our heart and we still feel something in our throat we feel sorrow we feel sad about how could something like this happen what could drive someone to this to this insanity that they could do something like this it's one thing to maybe attack someone else because you have some issue with that person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that knows but then when you attack children you know, who could do such a thing you know Allahu alam what drives people to that level but we feel this pain for people that we don't know we you know these are children we will never see these are parents that we will never see yet we feel this pain for them we read the news all day and all night and when we go back to work even everything everyone talks about is the children and the children and the children but how much love do we have for our own children of course the love for our own children surpasses this there's no connection you cannot compare the love of my own child with the care that i have for a young child a young child that comes to the mother to the to the masjid subhanallah you pat them on the head and and you say assalamu alaikum and you give them a candy but that's that's love but that's not the same love as you have for your own child and the love you have for your own child i can't sit here and explain i i'm i'm a young father you know my father could explain because he went through so many years of myself but then when we've learned the deen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us of the importance of the akhira and how to remember the akhira at all times how much of that do we teach our children we say we love our children we show that we love our children but if we really really love them we will ensure that we give them the best of homes the best of clothes the best of parents you know choosing the right wife is is the beginning of the child's tarbiya the the mother is the one majority of the time i mean 99% of the time especially in the in the back home countries that some of us come from the mother is the one that raises the child the mother is the teacher of that child from from day one and we love that child so we ensure that we pick that good spouse we ensure that we pick a good neighborhood to live in a good school system to send the school to the the kid to school to and good you know uh, friends to hang out with and good children to play with we do all that but that's all for the dunya 
All, all this love is for the dunya. Because we want them to be safe from harm. We want them to have friends. We want them to grow up and we want them to be healthy. That's all, that's all dunya related activities which alhamdulillah is good and it's necessary. It's part of life. But what about the akhra? If we love them so much, are we ensuring that they're learning the proper deen even at a very young age? Yes, it's, it is necessary even at a very young age that they learn the basics. Are we sending them to the proper places? The, the masajids have after school programs. They have weekend programs. They have daily programs. There's educated people in the masjid. There's ulama, there's qura, there's uh, the imams. We, do we send our children to them? To learn from them, to sit with them, to understand how, how the deen you know, can be put into our lives? We do it you know, once a week, maybe twice a week, Friday night, Sunday morning. But then five times a day they go to school. So the stuff they learn on Friday and Sunday, they go back to their regular school and it's all erased. Because their regular school, five days, they don't learn deen. In the general school system, they don't learn any deen. They, they decrease their deen. They're, they're, they're erasing whatever efforts that were put in by the masjid. The Friday night school and the Sunday school, all that effort from the hafizah, the effort from the imam, the effort from the brothers that are volunteering their time, that all gets erased Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. You know, or 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the school system. They learn their education, subhanAllah. They learn their science and the reading and writing. So doesn't that mean we should do double, triple, quadruple the effort when it comes to our deen? If we send them just twice a week, are we going to expect them to become hufaz in like two years? It's impossible. If we want them to be educated, if we want them to have deen in their lives, the focus should be on the deen. Because with deen, the success of the akhira will also come the success of the dunya. In following the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commandments from the noble Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's how we will gain success in both worlds, in the akhira and in the dunya. So the focus should be on the akhira, the focus should be on learning the commandments of Islam, learning the basics of Islam. And the only place where we live, we live in the West, we don't have the ability to go outside and just see Islam in front of us. We don't have the, the multiple madaris and the multiple libraries and the multiple bookstores that sell everything that you need to educate your child. We don't have that here. So what is the only place? And that is the masjid. The masjid is the only place in the Western society, in, in America, in the UK, in Europe, in these places. The masjid is the only place where we can help our children. If we love our children, the children should be sitting here with us. Especially if they're of older age, if they're you know, 10 and 12 and getting close to puberty, then the salah is fard on them. Oh, but they're in school, how, how, I can't just go get them. Of course you can go get them. If you want to get them, you can go get them. And if they're even older, like high school age, they can get a class, they can get an hour break, they can get a, a skipped a schedule where there is no class at the time. And you can go get them. Or they can get together with their friends and they can get an, a permission slip to do their Jummah right in the school. Many of the high schools in the U.S. have Salat al-Jummah right in the high school. What's preventing us? There's more Muslims in the high school than there are maybe of some of the other categories. There's more Pakistanis, there's more Indians, there's more Bangladeshi in the high schools in our community than there are of the other cultures in the other countries. So why can't the concerned parents get involved? and do something about that. Why can't we go to this Jamri High School as a representative from the masjid? That subhanAllah, we've heard that there are 20, 30, 40 young boys and girls that need to be praying Salat al Jummah. But we just tell the kids, oh you figure it out. Go talk to your friends and you know, maybe you can go in the room and pray. How are they going to manage this? That's something that us as parents, including myself, we should be able to have that concern in our heart that my child, I love my child, I want my child to enjoy Jannah just like I want to enjoy Jannah. But if the child is missing Salah day after day, 15 year old, 16 year old, 17 year old in high school, and the only Salat al-Jummah he prays is when there's a holiday. 
That's the only Salat al that he gets to see. Is when there's a holiday from school. Or sometimes there's like one of those half days. Or there's a parent conference day. So the kid is home and you take this, the son with you to school. But that should be something that is managed by the parents. The parents should be involved with the child to ensure that their akhra is secure. Especially the high school and the middle school age. But how can you make your child you know, so, so religious? How, how can you do that? You can't do that just by telling them, go pray. Come on, beta, let's, let's go. Time to pray. Time to pray Isha. Time to pray Fajr. Forget the child's Fajr, our own Fajr, we're not worried about. Are we waking up the family? Are we waking up the wives? Are we waking up the children, especially the ones that are older? Middle school and high school age children. And all the brothers here, subhanAllah, we have children. Many of us have children that are in high school, that are in college, that are in middle school. And they know how to pray, subhanAllah. I see them all the time. Many of them know me, man, and I know many of them. I see them all the time. But we don't see them in Jummah. And the excuse is because they're in school. In Pakistan, in Bangladesh, and in India, is that an excuse? Of course not. The school stops for Salat al Jummah. The world stops for Salat al Jummah. But here, can't do anything. Kids are in school. And it's a result because of us. It's our own fault, it's our own blame because we didn't care. We, we cared about ourselves. We said, oh, I have to make sure my job, I get a day off. I have to make sure if, if I have only a, a lunch break, I have enough time. I leave at this time, I come back at this time. What time does the imam start the khutbah? What time does the salat finish? We ask all these minutes, exact minutes, so that we can come and we can go back to work. But what about the kids? We don't even ask. Do we even ask the, the teachers, hey, is there a break? Is there some gap that you can give? And then make arrangements for that. But again, how, you can't just force that to happen. You can't convert a child that doesn't even know what Salat al Jummah is at the age of 13, 14, and just force them to pray. Where do you start? You start when they're very young. You start when they're little kids, the age of four or five years old. It's not mandatory for them to go make wudu. It's not mandatory for them to know all the, the Salah and, and, the, and the, the Surahs and all the exact positions of Salah. It's not mandatory for them. But they should be watching you and you should be helping them and they should be praying with you. And at home, when you pray your nawafal, when you pray your sunnahs at home, they should be praying with you. So that they have a love for the salah. So that they can, then when they get older, they will want to learn how to perform the salah properly. And they will learn the surahs and they will perform the salah properly and then they will come with you to the jummahs and then when they go to school, they will ask, wait, wait, I have to pray my salah, I have to pray dhuhr. In the winter, they have to pray asr. So are they just skipping the two salahs at the age of 13, 14, 15? Are they just going to skip two salahs every day? For years and years and years? So if we don't start with these children young and bring them to the masjid, not just for the salah, for example, you come at Isha or something and, and you bring your kids and then you go eat ice cream or something and you make a little, a little event for them and you tell your friends to bring their kids. While you're doing your salah, they can... They can be in the back rows and they can try to do their salah and then they can talk to their friends for a little bit and then we all go home it becomes something fun for the children we should all be doing that every single one of us every single one of us has children and we come here it's not a matter of five times a day we're not going into that discussion but we all come here if not daily we come every other day to come for salah but we all neglect our children at home and we assume the mother is going to just make them magically religious and when they get really old, like 15, 16, they're going to be really good kids and they're going to go to school and they're going to have deen on their mind. And when they go to college, they're going to be really smart and they're going to really be religious and not get into the bad habits of college. And then they're going to graduate and then they're going to get a job. And then mashallah, they'll go on hajj and then now they'll be a religious person. You know, that happens. I mean, we know people that it can happen like that, but that's not the way it's supposed to happen and it doesn't happen like that. If we don't start with our children at a young age, at the age of three, four, five, six, showing them salah, showing them that the masjid subhanAllah is packed. You know, when the kids come, they only see five, six people. They see ten people maybe sometimes, like Isha Salah, ten people, fifteen people. But have they seen, mashallah, fifty, sixty, seventy people in the masjid? You know, we bring them for like the, the programs, mashallah, but we know what happens in the programs, it becomes like a fun house for the children, because there's so many of them. But for Jummah, 
I don't see, you know, more than a few kids. We don't see them on the time for the madrasa, on the time for the, the kids' school, on a daily basis. There's no more than a handful of kids. I mean, this is, this is a shame on us, including myself. I have children, I have three children, alhamdulillah. And we need to bring them. Even if they don't understand, even if they're only three years old, and they don't even read the Arabic, but being in the environment of the masjid itself is the blessing that they will be blessed from. And it will affect them as they get older. And it will put them in the right frame of mind as they get older. And they will have the own, their own yearning, their own desire to want to learn more. There is no magic stick. There is no magic danda to make the kid religious. It's, it's impossible. There are very few people that Allah subhanahu wa has blessed that can flip their hearts. But if we want our children to be faithful, and as we've learned with the news that's going on, you, you don't know when life can end. Children are dying. As many as 14 children have been confirmed through the ABC and these news groups that 14 children have died in Newtown in the school shooting. SubhanAllah. So you hear these stories and you know you, you feel sad. But what about our own child? Are we doing something to secure their akhirah? What are we doing to secure their akhirah? We need to put them in the Islamic environment. We need to bring them to the masjid. There is a school system here, mashallah. Afternoons, there's, mashallah, we, we are blessed to have someone in this community that can teach the children and myself and the elders the proper education that they need. The proper tajweed, the proper kirat, the proper Islamic etiquettes that not only me and my elders, but more importantly, the children that they need. But we don't, we don't take advantage of it. We just come for salah and we go home. We need to step up our game, you know, in more or lesser words. We need to step up to the plate. And not just for ourselves, because we will benefit, of course. This is sadka jariya for us, for our children to grow up to be pious people. That is the only thing we will have left when we leave this world. So we need to bring the children to the masjid, we need to bring them for the salah, we need to bring them to the programs, to the Quran classes, to the Islamic education classes that have been set up by, by this masjid. We need to take advantage of it, because one day, we won't have the, the, even the possibility to do it. Ask the people that have lost their 14 to 25 children. They, don't, they can't even do it. And we know what happens back home in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, in Middle East, in Europe, in Africa, in China, all the Muslim countries, there's people that are watching their children die in front of them. They're watching their children die in front of them day by day. They're burying their own children. There's people in Africa that are choosing which child to bury while they're walking to, to some unknown area because the children can't survive that hardship. So they're burying them on the path covering them with leaves as they continue to walk in, in some of the African countries. We hear these stories, this is very easy, it's open information, anyone can look this information up as to what is going on with our children. Forget the parents and, and the people that are older that are in the wars and all that. Look what is happening to the children. We are blessed to have a safe area, a safe community to, to live in, uh, a masjid such so large and, and, and beautiful that we can provide these services, but we don't take advantage of it. And this is a stern warning to myself first because I have children and I need to provide that service to them. But also to every single one of you that have children because you've all been children and you've gone through it. And you know, oh, you know, what if you know, my parents sent me to the Hafiz school? You know, I would be a Hafiz right now, mashallah. But my parents didn't do that. So why don't we do that for our children? And if it's not here, it's local. It's in New York. It's one hour away. You know, I came today with a long three, four pages of subhanAllah hadith and ayats to, to read, but the events that happened today and with the importance of the children and, and their school system, I, I just wanted to talk about this. Forgive me for going so long. Uh, may Allah forgive us and may Allah keep us safe from the calamities that are happening in this dunya and the tests that we're facing. I mean, I uh, just wanted to remind every brother, everybody that there are printouts of the schedule in the front. The back side is the program that we're having in two weeks. So just take one. It's double-sided print. Everyone can see it's double-sided. Calendar in the front, flyer in the back. The flyer, O Muslims Be Muslims, is a mega event 
this will be a three-day program on the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Ulama from Canada, Ulama from Michigan will be here, Sheikh Imran will be here. Uh, there's a workshop in the morning, a class on the differences of the Imams. This is something for a little bit older crowd, uh, teenagers and up. People, I suggest people to register for the class. The class, there's a fee, but the program overall, there's no cost. So please visit the website, pathwaytojannah.com. It has all the information there. The Bethel Mukarram Masjid uh, website is bmmasjid.org. All the information there as well. Brothers will be leaving today to go to Bridgeport for this very purpose. Bringing deen in their life so that they can go home and bring deen into their family's life. You start with the family, your wife, your children, and then you can bring it out to, some, to the far-reaching community. So the brothers will be leaving today after uh, Maghrib. Whoever can make it, please join them. They'll go into Bridgeport Masjid, Masjid al-Nur. And as a reminder, next weekend is a, also a large Ishtama gathering in Boston. There will be groups of brothers leaving on Friday and on Saturday to spend a few days in Boston, uh, Worcester Masjid, for the same purpose. And then again, the, the last week of December is our own program, uh, the Pathway to Jannah. So everybody please do your best to attend.